Good evening everybody. A little bit later tonight guys. Uh, for those expecting me earlier like yesterday, I was out with my sisters today. Tonight I'm going to talk to you about The Husband's Secret by Lane Moriarty. A really good book about three women living, well, two live in Sydney and one lives in Melbourne but has travelled up to Sydney. And they've, two of them have got children at the same school and one, the older lady, is a receptionist bursa at the primary school. Now, our main character, whose husband has the secret, um, is a top Tupperware sales lady. And one day when looking for a piece of the Berlin Wall for her daughter she comes across a letter that he's written saying, in the event of my death, please read this. So you can imagine this details the husband's secret. Well, what's really interesting about this book is these three women are all actually stories are interwoven. One, the one who's moved, gone up to Sydney, um, she has a cousin who has lost, and her husband and her run a business, a marketing business, and the cousin's lost a whole pile of weight and become very gorgeous and slim, and no one's ever noticed this before. And she suddenly gets told by her cousin and her husband that they're madly in love. They've done nothing about it, but they're madly in love. And she does the unusual thing of saying, fine, well, I'm heading off to Sydney. My mother's unwell. I'm heading off to Sydney. I'm taking our child. And um, you two can do whatever you want. So that's how she ends up in Sydney. Now, interestingly, it's through having grown up there and her mother's up there and taking the children to school that we start to see the fallout and the issues that surround these three women's lives around various secrets and around how they all become quite entangled with each other's lives in ways they didn't expect. Um, Lane Moriarty's books, I've read a couple of them now and um, obviously seen Big Little Lies. Uh, her descriptions of suburban Australia and the Tupperware lady with the perfect pantry, with all the perfect Tupperware pieces, all named, all lined up perfectly. It's just gorgeous. I wish my pantry looked like that. It doesn't. It does have some Tupperware though. Um, yeah, so really beautiful descriptions and what her husband's secret actually is. Now, hello Mandy and Seamus and Brian. Um, it's really quite interesting how the secret plays out and how everybody gets involved in what's going on and Rodney. Um, a, a beautiful story with lots of twists and turns and I'm not going to tell you the twists and turns that start playing out at the very end of the book because you've really got to read it because um, it will spoil it. But all I can say is what would you do if you came home and found a letter written by your partner up in an attic or where you keep all your bits and pieces, what would you do if it said to be read in the event of my death. Hi Brian, what would you do? Would you open it? Would you read it? Or would you go, oh, partner doesn't want me to know about this and I will leave it. It's quite interesting to see how Celia um, deals with this and ponders on it for half an hour, I think, max, <laughs> and opens it. And her husband comes back when she says she's opened this very quickly. He's supposed to be overseas. He comes back in a big hurry. And uh, I've got to tell you, it's a really interesting book in that it's all about people's judgment. It's about people's judgment of themselves, judgments they make of each other, and judgment calls in many ways. So how people judge themselves based on incorrect information or just the wrong amount of information and how people don't follow things perfectly through to 
an objective truth. They see things only from their perspective. And it really, I found really interesting from the issue of, of some of the work I do with clients, that when you can see an event from somebody else's point of view, when you can change your perceptual position, how you can begin to see the overall and overarching truth of an event. Because we all view the world through our eyes and our understanding of the world. And people are meaning-making machines. That's what we use our five, or some might say six, senses to do, to actually make meaning of the world. And as we're younger, we make meaning of the small world we live in. And as we get older, our world expands and we can make more meaning of what's going on for us. Now, interestingly, one of these characters is an older woman. And this older lady, she has really shrunk her world down based on an event that happened to her. So being older, one usually expands one worldview. Her world has shrunk based around this one event to the point where her vision has become very single focused and that's all she can focus the world on and her decisions are based around what she thinks is the truth. And it's really interesting to see what happens when we start to see the story from different perceptual positions. We see the story from lots of different people's points of view and the reader can understand what is happening for these three characters uh, more than obviously the characters can. And it just is such an interesting notion. A great read, as I said, but we don't understand the world fully so because we only see it through our eyes. So what's really interesting and really interesting to do if you're in, uh, in a problem or an issue or you're in confrontation with another person, to actually stop and think of it from their perspective. How do you think they viewed what took place? What is their perception of what's gone on? And uh, it's a really useful tool that I do with hypnotherapy or through NLP. And... Um, I think that this book so much just reminded me of that technique. So I've got to say, people, Lane Moriarty, great Australian author. Yes, I know it's back the front, but I can't make it the right way around. Um, great Australian author. Uh, if you haven't read any of her books, do yourself a favour, as Molly Meldrum used to say, for all us Aussies. Get yourself a Lane Moriarty book to read because they are really, really fun, interesting and she's always got some little twists in there that you may not see coming or even if you do, the characters don't see the twists coming. Um, so again, I hope you've enjoyed my, my little book summation for tonight. Uh, if you want to look at something from someone else's position, um, and you're interested to view something in your life, feel free to contact me and we can do some hypnotherapy and perceptual positioning. So anyhow, I'm leaving you with this. I want people to actually answer my question tonight. If you came across a letter from your partner saying, read this, if you are reading this, or read this in the event of my death, would you read it or would you put it back away? Would the temptation to read it overtake you in 10 minutes, 5 minutes, no minutes, a day? How long would it take you to read it or not? I'd love to hear what people have to think, so leave your messages for me. And good evening, everybody. Great to see so many of you watching. And I will have something interesting about another book. I'm currently reading um, a little takeoff of some Enid Blyton books at the moment, so I'll probably talk to you about that tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon. Not sure yet. So goodbye, everybody, and um, have a nice night. Bye.